on Tuesday, Iran is hosting Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Russian President Vladimir Putin for a trilateral meeting with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. They're also expected to hold bilateral meetings to discuss economy and security. Ankara is considering another counter-terrorism operation across its southern border in Syria as Russia draws down its forces there to focus on Ukraine. Tehran appears to be on board. International sanctions on Russia and Iran will also be discussed during the meetings. Ankara is also opposed to harsh sanctions against Russia, which it believes could backfire. Now, Ukraine authorities say that a Russian missile a Russian missile attack on the southern city of Odessa has injured at least six people, including a child. A spokesman for the local military administration said that Russian forces fired at least seven cruise missiles from the Black Sea, hitting residential areas and destroying several homes. Odessa is home to Ukraine's biggest port and is crucial to exporting desperately needed grain to the rest of the world. Some 22 million tons of grain remain stuck there because of the fighting. Tonight, the new image of the suspect just out, a 20-year-old Jonathan Sapperman, who authorities say used a long gun and AR-15 style rifle, heading into a mall in Greenwood, Indiana on Sunday afternoon and walking straight to the bathroom with a backpack, where they believe he then began preparing. Authorities say Sapperman entered the mall about 4.54 p.m. Sunday with two rifles and a pistol and more than 100 rounds of ammunition and was in that bathroom for an hour. And on his way out of the bathroom, that's when they say he begins. Killed in the shooting, husband and wife Pedro and Rosa Pineda, who were having dinner at the mall's food court, and 30-year-old Victor Gomez, two others injured. Authorities tonight crediting a bystander, 22-year-old Elisha Dickin, who was legally armed, with stepping in and stopping that suspected shooter before more were killed. The prosecutor is attempting to convince a jury that there's no room for the consideration of mitigating circumstances when deciding on whether Nicholas Cruz should be put to death for the 2018 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas school shooting, given the premeditation and cruelty of the crime. Cruz had even recorded a cell phone video days before, boasting about his chilling intentions. Hello, my name is Nick. I'm going to be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR and some tracer rounds. Some 50 family members of those killed were in the courtroom as the prosecution recounted Cruz's methodical killing spree. Cruz's defense counsel has chosen to defer an opening statement until later in the trial. However, it's been reported that among the mitigating factors the defense would like to produce is evidence of brain abnormalities Cruz sustained as a fetus. Black smoke drifted across the Mogadishu skyline on Monday after a plane crash landed at an airport in the Somali capital. Footage from the scene showed the Juba Airways plane upside down next to the runway, having apparently flipped over on landing. No deaths were reported and, according to the BBC citing local officials, all those on board, more than 30 passengers, were rescued. Firefighters have been working to extinguish the flames. The domestic flight had been traveling from the city of Baidoa to Mogadishu.
celebrations on the streets by supporters of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Khan's party won 15 of the 20 seats in the by-election, paving the way for the 69-year-old's return to power in Punjab. When Khan was ousted from power in a vote of no confidence in April, he also lost the majority in Punjab. The by-election was seen as a popularity test for Khan. The ruling Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz has conceded defeat. We will make a comeback. A meeting of the coalition partners has been convened to decide the future course of action. Queensland has recorded its highest number of COVID hospitalisations since the pandemic began, with nearly 1,000 patients currently admitted. It comes as case numbers also spike, with experts warning the real number is likely five times higher than reported. New data shows the state's case numbers are spiking. This time last week, there were under 7,000 reported. Yesterday's numbers similar, before a jump today to nearly 10,000. Hospitalisations have reached a record, 983 patients with COVID currently admitted. The silver lining, ICU numbers are less than at the start of the Omicron wave.